with Sarah Bonetto O'Brien, who is the owner and operator of Escapes uh, Eatery and Catering Operation, as you all call it. <laughs> is that an accurate description? Uh, yes, I'd say so. And fine food. Yeah. I, I would also say so, yes. And local food. Isn't that great? So let's start with the local part. You're really committed to that, to that aspect of what your offerings are. Very much so. We have 13 farmer suppliers right now. Uh -huh. um, all of our meats are local, and most of them are free range and organic. Um, we're very, very committed to supporting our farmers, and I love it that when they drop off, it's here at the back door. I accept their lovingly grown food and hand them cash. It's a, it's a great transaction, very fulfilling for a chef. That's fantastic. Definitely. And then that translates into the uh, original food that you're creating or how you craft it according to what's available and what's, what's local. Yeah. Definitely. Our menu is very, very local, um, down to the grains. Um, it does change seasonally. We, yes, you probably see the menu behind us. <laughs> so you've got some rhubarb, uh, so that yep. you're, you're in season with that. Yes. Sure. And, the, and, and then your clientele, because we have people that are dropping in, mm -hmm. eating in, taking out. Yes. Um, and, you know, I'm pretty proud of the fact that it's only us and the liquor store. They're open in Borden in the Gateway Village all through the winter. Um, the pottery shop sort of is, and I know that you've spoken to Chris Palmer about that. Um, but it's the locals that support us through the winter. Um, so we do have a little bit of reduced hours through the winter. It's four days a week. But there is enough local support to keep us going for those four days. Um, so the customer mix changes a little bit now that we're getting into tourist season and open six days a week. Um, but still, I would say that uh, over half of our customers right now are locals. So we are strongly supported by the, the Borden and surrounding area population. Harris is suggesting that maybe you could advertise this is your last chance to get a, a real good bite before you on the bridge. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um, we like to call ourselves the pit stop, the gateway village. Um, you're probably an hour each way um, before you get to another good food center. So we definitely love to be your, your road trip snack stop. And I've never but how you bet into this. So is it something that's been kind of had, had an ache or an appetite for for a long time? I like how you said appetite. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, definitely. I've been cooking since I was 16 years old which um, I don't want to age myself, but that is many years ago. Um, when I started in culinary school, um, it was only after I dropped out of being pre-law at Western. Um, I've always been a talker, if you haven't noticed. And I, I knew that I, I'm great at book learning, I'm, I'm great at writing papers, great at writing proposals, but I needed to work with my hands and work with people. Um, so I ended up going to culinary school in Northern Ontario, where I'm originally from and traveled back and forth across Canada cooking. I got my Red Seal very young, um, at 19 years old, and knew that there had to be more to it than being a line cook um, in various resorts and properties across Canada. So the Culinary Institute of Canada was the first one to offer an applied degree in culinary operations. So that's what pulled me to the island. Um, and as I was taking that, I was blown away with what PEI had to offer for such a small population. Um, very strong agriculture, very strong commitment to organics and pockets across the island. Um, so I knew that there was great potential here. And after having gone, um, I married a culinary student <laughs> um, who was from here and got him out to BC. We did an apprenticeship on an organic dairy farm, making cheese, went and cooked in Halifax for a couple of years, but then knew that we were going to come back here. Um, I did another apprenticeship on a local organic farm, and I always look that way when I say that because it was in Bedeck, uh, and just learned what grew here and when. All of this was building up to this exact moment in time. Um, so then we, we launched a crowdfunding campaign, a Kickstarter campaign, to, to really build up local support. We were very successful in that, and now we've been open since June 2014. So the entrepreneurial side of it really <laughs> grew out of your, your interest in food and then your, your uh, desire to be uh, satisfied with people over Definitely. Um, I think I've always been an entrepreneur at heart. As soon as I settled into this, 
um, it all made sense. I'm, <laughs> I'm not the world's best employee. Um, I, I always am looking for new ways to fix, um, to fix problems. I'm definitely a solution person, and yeah, that's, that's very well suited to running your own show. And how many would you have employed with, along with yourself? Um, in the summertime, with myself, six and a half. <laughs> yeah. And then in the, the rest of the year? Um, myself, and then two very part-time people, or one more full-time. But we're looking to expand that a little bit this time. Well, that's great. That's, uh, there, are, there are more and more people around that's, uh, <laughs> looking for uh, good food, uh, healthy food. I agree. So that's, that's, that's great. Well, good luck with this. We're glad to have here. Thank you, sir. It. It's good to see that you're that you're enjoying it. Always. <laughs> Great, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.